You're right, Taiwan. My bad. There we go. Yeah. Taiwan. They they just seem to have a problem with a bunch of different things. Are we recording right now? Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna <laughs> cut it out later. <laughs> Let's say you just keep that as just a cold open. Um. God, oh, that'd be funny as fuck. It's a cold open. Uh. All right. So I'll just hop right into it with the intro. All right. Son of a bitch. <laughs> okay. Now I'm keep gonna hop into it with all. Keep this all in. Right. Uh, welcome to the Ace Podcast, where we talk all things art, culture, and entertainment, but more specifically, pop culture entertainment. I can't words because I try to say specifically too fast, and it doesn't come <laughs> out correctly. <laughs> you you want to try one uh, more? No, I'm going to keep it like that. <laughs> we'll just keep uh, it like it is. All right. Exactly. Uh, I'm your host, Will, the greatest, and with me today, I have uh, our man, Luke A. DeVille. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's uh, oh. been a bit since the last step. Well, not a bit. It's probably been just about a week, but you know, yeah. it's been a, it's been it's been a little bit for me. A couple of days. So soft. It's really not soft. been that much. I've been in here more than I have in the past few months. Ah. Anyway, Will, how are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm doing okay. Just trying to keep up on work. Um, going around. I'm I'm going to my first convention in about two years next weekend, so that'll be exciting. And I guess I'll have to record and just schedule that at the time. What what kind of convention? Uh, going to Blurred Con with a with a friend of mine. <gasps> Looking back up, going a trip to Virginia. I don't know what Blurred Con is. What is that? It's it's, a, it's a, it was just a regular uh comic convention, but for like you know nerds of like uh, it's <laughs> it's it's open to to all types of like various minorities, like gender, sexual, ethnic. Oh, okay. Differently abled bodies, et cetera, and stuff. I mean, of course, white people can come too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not excluded, but it's just like you know, it's very much founded with. There's a there's white. a sign outside that says "Keep out the whites." Right outside the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, In the middle of, of Virginia. <laughs> there's there's a there's a specific type of person that'll get mad at that joke. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> What, what does he mean by that? <laughs> that actually sounds really cool. I didn't even know. Yeah. Um. Funny enough, at the uh the first year they had their con, I actually did a panel there for the YouTube channel we don't work for anymore. So I'm not oh, giving shit. free press <laughs> for the for the um, YouTube channel we are no longer associated with. Yeah. I um. It, it's funny because like in my Facebook memories, uh the ceo of that channel god what a weird way to phrase that um <laughs> and it posted like hey by the way will's gonna be in virginia doing a panel and i'm like motherfucker it's your channel what was the panel even about um it was, i don't remember uh, this at all <laughs> yeah it was me it was me him and cj um so okay. the panel was kind of focused on uh discussing like growing channels um how we kind of handled content production, some of the mm. stuff. I think it was an introduction, 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 introduction to us. Yeah. Introduction. Uh, mm. be the title for the episode. Uh, the introduction mm. to like the channel, what we do, the content. So I think I was partially using it for marketing, but partially using it for like ideas and having conversations and meeting people. Um, yeah. They had a cute little crowd. It was like five and people. But it was also like the first time the con happened. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. Um, maybe some time down the road, I might another you know, panel do something with like nerds and mental health if I have the the time out to actually yeah. Do research for that. I that sounds like something to actually kind of that especially in these times right now. This seems like something kind of important to really kind of discuss. I don't think mental health gets as oh, yeah. much play as it should. And listen, who you who you telling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but how have you been, man? How's how's your week been? What's been going I've on? I've been with good. You? It's been a month since uh, my job ended. Um, I've been chilling. Probably not as productive as I should have been or as I should mm -hmm. be. But uh, I've been kind of taking it easy for a little bit. Kind of been searching out for new opportunities and uh, looking to grow some new careers. Been catching up on a lot of different stuff that I missed out on. Uh, video games, reading. Uh, got kind of back into comic books. Um I don't actually remember if it went to the last episode, but I know Marvel, Luke, and I kind of talked about kind of growing out of comics and then getting back into it. It's kind of weird, but... Yeah, same thing with me, which, like, I was actually reading before. I didn't oh, yeah. cut you off. What were you saying? Well, no, 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 that's, that's just what I was saying. It was like, it's just really weird, like, 
leaving comics and then coming back and just kind of seeing everything that sort of happened and almost kind of being reminded why you don't read comics as much as you used to. <laughs> yeah, it, at least not from like the big two. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I definitely went to uh, actually there. So there's two comic stores that are within like a five minute drive of each other. And the main one I went to, uh, I went to, to pick up statics new run. Um, oh yeah. I'm, I'm going to actually try and follow that. Yeah. It's like my, my favorite. physical copy but then i went to a different one uh after a haircut last week and I, I picked up a couple um new books and they've just been all like i've had probably a good month's worth of comics just sitting off to the side that i just haven't opened yet and i'm like no no i'm gonna get to them well i have stuff from like <laughs> last year that i got that i'm like oh that's interesting i'll read that just have not touched it i really need to get through my my floppies before i go and finish like Floppy. i got like four <laughs> Yeah, I got like four trades. I gotta do like I, I got a, it's, Stepan Sajix, Stepan Sajix, um, book Harleen, which I'm like, wow, the only time I might read a book with the Joker in it. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I, I mean, but indie stuff is kind of. I think it's a good kind of takeaway from it, right? Because it's like, yeah, the 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 big two are some of the ones that I really kind of followed, and like to some extent, I still kind of keep up. But like, I don't know, like reading stuff from like Image and Dark Horse and Bang, is it Bang Boom or is it just Boom? What's it called? I think it's Boom. You might be yeah, thinking Boom of Bang Studios. Zoom. The, you might Bang be thinking Zoom. of Bang Zoom, the uh, voice acting company. Yes, I, yes, I think I got, I got the wires. Uh, Boom does Power Rangers, <laughs> right? Boom Studios and shit like that. Um, like a lot of the indie stuff, really, I think, kind of shows how creative you can get with the medium and right. just like the kind of stories that you can tell. Right. Yeah. No. I I, I definitely agree. Like after reading through Invincible, it was so. Like, part of the reason I think it's really good is because it actually ends. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and not saying a lot of these books don't run for a long time, but it's just like they, like, say what you will about, uh, you know, Mark Millar and uh, some of the other creators. Like, their books end. Like, you, yeah. people are in love with the, the book version <laughs> of The Boys, but it ends. It's It's not still around, you know? The Boys is like, oh, man. It's not a great book, but you know what? It ends. Like, like I wanted is a goofy ass book, but it ends. It's yeah, not fucking I, forever. Yeah, I have a really, I have a really weird sort of relationship with like early two thousands Garthinas because like, yeah, I don't know. Like the boys is one of those things where like it's so freaking two thousands just by like you know what oh, they yeah. say, the type of violence that's in it. Part of me is like whenever I read, go back through it and reread it, I'm just like, okay, that's a little, it's a little, it's a little much now. But I don't know. There's yeah. just something about like how ridiculous it is sometimes that like I still read it every now and then. It's like, I don't know. Like it, it, it definitely has problems now that I've kind of gone back mm -hmm. through it. And I've, I've gone on record on saying this several times. I think the show is much better than the comic, but, um, yeah, it's just like those early 2000s kind of books. It really, you can they're, tell when a, when a story was written. kind of hit or miss in hindsight. Yeah, yeah. You can really tell when something was written. <laughs> right. Like, like, I mean, if you go back and uh, like what I did after uh, I finished Invincible is I basically started where the season ended, even though they moved a couple things around in terms of pacing, you can still kind of pick up. Okay. Um, in a decent spot and then just read through it. And boy, that's kind of a trip. If you, it, cause you're going through like a good decade and some change of, of uh, creativity and content from the same guy. So you can see how his writing. Yeah. Changed. So like, um, this isn't really a spoiler, but it's like in the show, William is openly gay, but in the comic, like there's a, you can tell it's definitely written in like 2005, but they still kind of use, gay as a joke but then william comes out in like the middle of the book or close to the end <laughs> right so, um, right i'm sure kirkman just looked and said well i mean that would have been offensive so why don't i just 
cut yeah. the fat because it's 2020 2021 yeah, like, it, it would be kind of weird to have a plot like that when like you know yeah. it's a it's it, it's a lot more important to just have a character that's like open about that you know and rather than right. being kind of hidden i mean i don't know there's like two ways to kind of look at it because i know that there's people that still kind of yeah. struggle with that even today and i think it's mostly just because you know they have family issues that they kind of have to deal with that or they have mm-hmm. like the way that society and everything's kind of infringed this idea of how you how you're supposed to be but i will say yeah the idea of kind of taking a show and like redoing it or taking a comic and redoing it, you'd kind of have to change some of that stuff. And yeah, I can see exactly. why they would, ha- why he would want to do that. Yeah. And, and I think like, I'm not saying we shouldn't have stories that kind of rack with some of the difficulties that, you know, various people have in life, be they um, gay or, uh, you know, have a disability or any, or any right. sort of like um, diverse population, but it's just like, people just i think the representation of having it be normalized might be a little better because it's just like Mm -hmm. mark has a gay best friend and it's not it's not discussed it's not an issue it just never comes up because it's just like by now you know for the average high schooler it it isn't really that big of a deal like if you think about it in context you know mark if if it's by real time would have been born in like 2004 yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, and probably the same for William because he's what, like 17, 18, so like 2003, 2004, like, yeah. You know. so they're very, very Gen Z, you know, invincible in the teen team on TikTok. <laughs> uh, what a, a way to go. But, um, yeah, speaking yeah. of uh, weird ideas from the big two, we can kind of get into our first topic here. We got a new trailer for Suicide Squad. Uh, sorry, The Suicide Squad. That's right. James Gunn's The Suicide Squad. Uh, did you see the trailer? I did, yes. So like, well, I was originally going to have this be for last week, but we kind of ran out of time. So anyways, right. uh, yeah. what did you think about it? I think <sighs> I'm really excited for this movie. Uh, I am the... too. I am too. Um, um, you go ahead first, because I just... Yeah. I, I, I... Always, I always have the butt. I like a lot of things that they're doing. I like that it's colorful. I dig the humor. James Gunn is the only one, aside from that five second snippet in the old Suicide Squad, to get Harley's costume right, where it's both like practical, but it fits her aesthetic and doesn't bother the dog fuck out of me. Um, <laughs> that's that's been like a petty thing that I've had in all of her appearances. Uh, well, um, what exactly has it been then? So let's see the first suicide squad. It sucked because I don't like, um, like the, the short shorts and dads look like they were trying so hard to make her sexy, that it like circled back mm-hmm. around and just didn't work at all. <laughs> um, and like, I don't like the red blue color pairing that they kind of forced on the Harley. I'm mm-hmm. like, her colors are red and black, it's been right, red and black yeah. for like 15, 20 years. You know, now you're trying to make it like pink and blue and like, but now she, um, it's like overdoing it with like the colors and it doesn't balance well. Right. Um, um, was that how she was looking in the comics at the time or did they kind of no, incorporate the, that after? It was after. It's the okay, same thing. Okay. Uh, you know how like MCU inspires shit for Marvel? DC yeah. did the same thing. So she's, okay, okay. she's had that red and blue uh tail thing ever said like it's even in her cartoon and it, it bothered yes. me a little bit there but the rest of her outfit is perfectly fine. yeah like that was that was one of the things where i was always just thinking like were they following the books after that because he she's just had it for so long i can't remember yeah like what came first it was it was definitely uh after the fact because they saw like the popularity of the reception um there's that um a lot of people i i understand why everyone dresses how they do in birds of prey like on from <laughs> having talked to women <laughs> about it and in terms of like personality i'm like yes this fits personality right. wise but it's like i don't i don't like the the costume design of that movie <laughs> um and it's not because of any arbitrary Meh, women aren't sexy they don't make my pee pee hard it's like no i just like <laughs> i'm like you can do a um a, like functional kind of fashion forward yeah. or comic accurate costume 
Um, and like Harley is like, oh, she's weird and zany and over the top. And, and I'm just like, yeah, I, like in terms of purpose, I get it. And in terms of like context in the movie, I get why a lot of them were dressed that way. But I just don't like it. And I'm like, there's mm-hmm. a there's a way to kind of incorporate ways that are tasteful, but functional, but also still like inspired by the con. I don't know. I, I can be I can be yeah. a bit of a, a shill like accuracy and james is the first one to kind of get it where i'm like i'm like wow it's functional look at her she's basically entirely covered up but it's still sexy and it still fits her personality why did it take right. so long like <laughs> why, no no why yeah, did this take I, five years well i mean like i, I think costume design is kind of important because like right if i can't tell what that character is supposed to be i think it doesn't really do anything interesting with I just don't think it does anything interesting enough to where, like, I can tell right. who that's supposed to be, but it's still, like, a new kind of look, right? Right. Birds of Prey I like as a movie. I kind of agree with you. I don't really like the costume design because I don't think they really do anything kind of interesting with it, right? Like, yeah, they're just like, kind of dressed, like, normally. Like, that's just how um, normal people dress. And, like, Huntress was probably the most egregious because she had her navel exposed, but she was an assassin. I'm like, yeah. that's really dumb. Yeah, but exactly. like your like, your abdomen like, will be the first thing they shoot, sis. Yeah, like again, that's a thing where I'm looking at it. and It's like, okay, yeah, she does that in the comic book, but I mean, like, she didn't have to. Yeah, I, I kind of wish she hadn't. Yeah, like there's versions that we're, we're talking about fashion, whatever. We're supposed to be talking about Suicide Squad. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it's it's adjacent. We'll yeah, get back to adjacent, it. It'll adjacent. circle around. <laughs> um. But I mean, like, and that's the thing I like about the Suicide Squad is like, if I look at the comics, I look at the interpretation of the movie, a lot of them are either one to one or kind of like new takes that you you get who they're supposed to be. Like, you know, right. bigger, I'm like, yeah, it's Boomerang. Um, Rick Flag looks like Rick Flag. Um, he looks more like Rick Flag here than he did in the original Suicide Squad. Yes, e- exactly. Um, Peacemaker. It's like Peacemaker, Sportsmaster. <laughs> like one to one. Uh Sportsmaster's a little different. Um a I mean bit. I think I think it works for him. Uh mm-hmm. like Thinker looks like Thinker. Polka Dot Man looks like Polka Dot Man. <laughs> uh Arm Fall Off Boy looks like Arm AFO Boy or AFO whatever they call him, the AFO or whatever. Weasel the, looks like yeah, a big ass weasel. Boy. Yeah. yeah. See um the beautiful thing about using like losers from DC is that having them be comic accurate only reinforces that these are losers. Yes. And that's actually. like the best part. Yeah. I, th- I think you're right. Um, and it's weird. Cause like I have a love hate thing with, uh, with the villain of the movie. I'm excited that it's, uh, that it's Starro. And that we get yeah. to see some Omega weird shit finally in the DCEU. <laughs> but I'm also disappointed that it wasn't in Justice League because it's like, Zach, you know, fuck all this weird dark side spaceship. Have them fight Starro. That's look, so cool. Look, see, here's the thing, right? Starro, you can't make any sort of grand symbolic gestures with dark side however and his search for the anti-life equation that he sends his uncle steppenwolf to go get so that he doesn't have to fulfill his student loan debt of nine million world or whatever it was (laughs) right like you can't make a big symbolic gesture with a giant starfish i i've kind of gotten over it like i'm i'm at the point where like i i don't think Zack snyder cares about the he obviously cares about these characters. I don't think he cares about like the stuff that fans kind of like, things like Starro yeah. and stuff like that. Because I fucking love Starro. I'm with you. Starro's yeah, like, stupid. Like, these weird fucking starfish. <laughs> if you're gonna like put a big anywhere... ass space starfish, it's like um, it's yeah. like you can you can make stupid shit work. Because I I've watched uh I spent like a day randomly watching a bunch of the Superman movies I missed. It was like three of them. It was like All Star and uh. Uh, Superman versus the Elite, um, which both of them fantastic animated films, but one of them, uh, uh, he fights like this giant robot sun battery. 
or some shit? What's the name? Like Solar or something? Something like that. I th- I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and it's like, when I say that, it's like, oh yeah, it's a giant robotic sun. It sounds so absolutely stupid. But in the movie, it's like, wow, this is like a legitimate threat. What's Superman going to do against this big ass sun? <laughs> yeah, you we can argue the merits. Like, you know, it's like animated. You can do more with it. But I mean, again, like... I- I've never been Got more it. excited for a DC movie than Suicide Squad because, like, it's actually fucking, like, really weird and crazy. And, like, these are... I know, like, almost every single one of these fucking characters. And, like, to see them in their outfits, it's fucking stupid, but I like it. Yeah. Um. So what are what are kind of your thoughts regarding the trailer? I mean, like, who they brought back, I think, is pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. And who they're adding to the cast, I think, is very interesting um i i'll be a, a little sad if if like harley gets killed off but it also shows me that hey there's no rules but i mean like we yeah. all i think have a decent idea of who who lives and who dies um yeah i think king shark is cute too he's he me a couple chuckles king shark is very cute and i think it's surprising because again like james gunn said they went out of their way to avoid making him cute and he still ended up being pretty cute I mean, he's a giant fish man. He's a giant chubby fish man. It's important to make right. that like you, <laughs> right, you, Like you made him a himbo, bro. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bird. Whatever he says. Um, Bird. There you go. Um, what do I think? Uh, I'm still excited, too. Um, I like the way the movie looks, and I kind of like the mm. plot that they're going with. Um yeah. I will say one of my main things so far is that I haven't really seen anything that's like super funny. Um th- mm. this has kind of been my thing too. Like James Gunn's humor I think is very hit or miss for me. I love Guardians 2. I don't necessarily think it's a very funny movie though. Like I don't really laugh at a lot of the jokes in Guardians yeah. 2, but I like I like the plot and I like the messaging in that movie. So I think if he does the same thing with this and adds like that same kind of heart to it, I'll be on board. Right. Mm-hmm. But as it stands, like in terms of some of the jokes, not, they don't really land for me. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think that's a problem though, for me personally, for a lot of the people that, you know, are online saying, you know, they canceled the Snyder verse for this. It's yes, probably, thank God they did. <laughs> it's probably, so a I can problem. get more of, I can get more of this in Shazam. <laughs> it's, Thank it's, God. It's probably a big problem for them, but um, I don't know. Like I, again, just kind of what we've been talking about. This feels like a very fringe DC kind of movie, and I really, I really do appreciate that. Especially, mm-hmm. you know, because I feel like this is one of those only movies where we can get characters like Starro, and we can get like characters like King Shark, and get characters like fucking Polka Dot Man, right? Like, the fringe loser DC characters. This is the spot for them. And I'm excited about that, because I love the DC losers. They're great. No, I, I, uh, yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, I don't know. It just, it looks fun. I'm interested. I know a lot of people online got pissed, because it's like, Sportsmaster, does he put Superman in a hospital with a kryptonite bullet? Oh, like- Bloodsport. Bloodsport, sorry. Right, there I you go. I, I, was, I was confused master. for a second. I was like, I didn't know Sportsmaster was but, in Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like, yeah, what's wrong with it? Yeah, it's a fucking com. Yes. What the? Yeah? Fucking Batman almost did that. He he had fucking kryptonite tear gas. If you have kryptonite anything. Yeah, it'll Superman. probably lay his ass out for a little bit. <laughs> like, I, that, that whole thing. I, I, I don't know why they got pissed. It's like, well. If you if you put a bullet in a gun, and it's made out of his weakness, it'll probably fuck him up a little bit. I just I, I just fucking hate comic book fans sometimes. <laughs> it's like, oh, you you have to, you have to. It's like that's his that's his that's his character. His whole character yeah. is fucking shooting at Superman with kryptonite bullets. Congrats, that's he his whole did it. fucking character. <laughs> I will say the one thing that did kind of annoy me because I was watching that trailer mm-hmm. and the whole thing where Bloodsport like starts talking like his daughter starts coming into it. There was a theory oh, yeah. for a while. 
It was I'm gonna starting be to dead think shot. that this is true. Will Smith was supposed to come back. Right. Something must have happened. Probably a scheduling conflict. Probably. So they just decided to rewrite that character as Bloodsport. Which, yeah, it works. It's fine. Oh, yeah. um, I'll have to yeah. send the list to you actually later on. But uh, there's a list of characters that he almost went with for this movie. Um, And one of them, which would have been really fun... Hopefully they uh, he gets to do it some other at some other point. Um, fuck, what was it? Uh, I think it was Rainbow. <laughs> it was fuck. What's his name? Uh, it's like some Rainbow Monster. I can't remember his fucking name. Maybe it is just uh, Rainbow Monster. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, you you know it would have been really funny. Uh, Calendar Man. Calendar Man would have been fun. Uh, I wonder if Reeves wants to save him for a batman sequel because he might want to use the long halloween version of them oh okay <laughs> not the not the one that we want the the you know hannibal lecter one yeah I, I mean that'd be impressive if they're just like just a year where we had two separate appearances from calendar man and just like <laughs> suicide squad yeah, it would have been in the batman <laughs> oh jeez. but um that'd be that'd be funny yeah, it it would be fun. But all in all, what what we're getting so far, super super into it. Um, yeah. it actually comes out August six, which is when I actually officially move into my new place in Colorado. So Ooh. fortunately, I won't be able to fucking watch it because I'll be busy that day. But be on I'll Max. Check it out. Yes, HBO Max. Um, so I'll be able to pick it up whenever I want. Yeah, so it it'll be a month from uh from us recording this, but that's that's exciting. You know, we got Space Jam two right around the corner. Right, Space Jam two. <laughs> uh, of course, how can you forget? You have uh, to be prepared to slam, Luke. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic on that, but we'll see. I mean, it's 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 Space Jam. There is no down. Like it, you, it looks like have it's to... very aware of what it's supposed to be. So I got to give it, it that. and that's what I need. <laughs> like i feel like you'd have to you'd have to try to fuck that up for what is essentially an ad for hbo max with basketball exactly like, that's <laughs> ready player one plus you know basketball plus looney tunes congrats it's space jam 2 plus don Cheadle. yeah <laughs> i was um i was telling my dad because like a, a, tr a commercial came on for it and i'm just like uh like, ah, yes, the cast, LeBron James, Bugs Bunny, <laughs> a bunch of basketball players, and, of course, the looniest tune of them all, Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can move on to the next one. Did gotcha, you gotcha. see the, uh, that little, I guess, Flash BTS sequence we got? Um. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, and showing, like, you know, Eaton's Wayne uh, and, and a couple other sneak previews, not sneak previews, but, like, sneak shots of what we got coming down the pipeline. It is uh, very interesting. Um, I don't know, what are, what are kind of your thoughts about that? I mean, the movie, I think I shared my thoughts on Supergirl, uh, I don't really like the Man of Steel symbol, so it is interesting that they're using her uh, or using yeah. that specific symbol. Uh, her haircut is is not blonde, so a lot of people are believing it's what's her name? It's like Lara Zor or something. Lara Zor L or some shit. I have um, no it's idea. not Kara. <laughs> I, it's not I, Kara, I have, she's not blonde. I have very little knowledge of Supergirl history, but um Yeah, it's the Soton same. <laughs> I th I think it is Laura, I think, now that you mention it. Um Yeah. You know, I'm gonna be totally real with you. The Flash movie isn't as exciting to me. I think it's mostly oh. just because I'm not super on board with the first Flash movie being the big King flash point <laughs> yeah the big dc crossover thing besides justice league like 
kind of the same thing with Captain America Civil War that I had, right? Like, I wasn't super mm. stoked on the last Captain America movie being basically an Avengers movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Avengers like. Light. Yeah, like, so my big thing with this is that I like Flash a lot, so the fact that it almost Laura seems Lane like... Kent. Sorry. Oh, is that it? Laura Lane Kent, yes. Laura Lane Kent. Okay, okay. Yeah, go um, ahead. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's just kind of weird to me because it's like, especially when I hear that Grant Morrison and Ezra Miller were working on a script together and they didn't go with that, makes me kind of peeved because uh, at the very least that would have been kind of interesting and I imagine it would have done a lot more with, like, the Flash mythos in general, but... Right. I mean... You know, Michael Keaton back as Batman. I really, obviously, I want to watch it just to kind of see that. Um, I'm morbidly curious. Yeah, I, I think the rumor right now is that Christopher Reeve is also Superman in this, which I guess makes sense. But f- it it doesn't if Supergirl has the Man of Steel symbol. Well, I mean. There's no rules. The timeline <laughs> there's no, is broken. There's no rules. There's no rules. There's no rules. It's, yeah, it, I don't know. It's it's just, especially with the plot leak that I've kind of read. Um, I don't know if you read it, but there's a. Uh, I probably did. I've yeah. I don't know, I've read a couple different because this, this movie's gone through like multiple directors and writers. So yeah, this thing has been in like development hell. We sh- we were supposed to get this like three years ago. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> along with a cyborg movie, and yeah, where along we are with now. a cyborg movie, but uh, you, you know, especially after Ray Fisher kind of came out and talked a little bit, that's probably not going to happen many times. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, to be fair, no shade, no, no, nothing against Ray Fisher. I think uh, when he did his expose piece, I think he touched on a lot of industry issues, particularly with WB. Unrelated to all of that, I can't think of a single soul that was asking for a cyborg movie. Not a damn person alive was, was saying, I want the 90, I want the two hour saga of Victor Stone. Like, who is yeah. he fighting? Fucking, um, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, the Superman villain. Oh, Metallo? Oh, the, oh that'd be funny as hell. Uh, <laughs> uh, Brainiac. Brainiac. <laughs> Brainiac. Cyborg versus Brainiac movie? Was that what you were going to give us? Who was he going to fight? Yeah, I was, I was about to say, fucking, we're, we're, ne- we're never going to get Brainiac in a movie. <laughs> but, I don't, um, I, God, why won't they do Brainiac? He's so interesting. I don't know. It's his bottled cities. They don't like Superman. So, you know. <laughs> don't. I mean, Again, shit, even a... Supergirl would be like, we'll give you Brainiac 5 from Legion of Superheroes. It's like, fuck I was you. I'd say that there, there's a certain, there's a certain type of fan that'll get mad at me saying that. But, uh, anyway, yeah, like, look, I'll at least say this. If they go like absolutely crazy with it, um, all of the plot leaks I've seen so far, though, seems to indicate Superman and Batman are like the only other DC characters in it. Apparently, there's Ugh. like no one. There's no evil Wonder Woman or Aquaman. But those are just like oh, leaks God. I've seen. I don't know if those are true, but we do at the very least know that there is a Supergirl, and there mm-hmm. is a Michael Keaton Batman. Right. Which I don't know what what I maybe because I'm not a huge Batman fan. I just can't get behind the whole Enter the Batverse. <laughs> that they're trying to do here it's like yo it's like we'll do affleck we'll do keaton and we'll do another one um what's the other one that's supposed to be oh yeah we'll do fucking bat dad with his pistols of justice um well see here's the thing that still really confuses me because it was super convincing for a really long fucking time there has to be a reason Zack Snyder cast Jeffrey Dean Morgan as Bat Dad, right? Like, I mean, he he's a great pick for Thomas Wayne. Yeah, if you like were going to do that, Thomas Wayne Batman, but so like, you want to see Zack Snyder's Flashpoint? <laughs> like, okay, so fucking, there's that whole thing where like Zack Snyder plotted out like this entire saga for Justice League, right? Right. You cannot tell me he did not cast Jeffrey Dean Morgan to be Thomas Wayne Batman. You can't tell me that because he looks 
almost exactly the same. Furthermore, he cast what's her name, Walking Dead Lady, as fucking uh Martha. Oh. Yeah. And she looks exactly the same as fucking Flashpoint Joker. So I they're two relatively well known actors to where part of me is thinking he had to have cast them for that reason. There's no other reason. Like, why would you cast them? You could have gotten anybody, but you cast them for like these non speaking parts. They just die. <laughs> right. It's just like you don't get actors that big for. I mean, it's the same thing with the uh, with Deathstroke. Like, we you know it's like, oh yeah, they definitely have plans for him. Well, we know uh, they had just plans didn't for shake him. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that one didn't really shake out too well. Right. Exactly. So, <sighs> poor poor Joe. Poor Joe. <laughs> uh, that's probably the one I'm most mad about. Is like as as much as I don't really, I'm not a huge fan of like Batflex writing, even though I do enjoy the Snyder Cut. As difficult as that is for me to say, um, and it's a good movie. It was it was good enough. I will say that it's good enough. The Batman movie with him going up against Joe's Joe Manganiello's Deathstroke. Because I'm like, that's yeah. What a waste of good casting. On both of them, because <laughs> like the the issue with the uh, Batfleck was never bat, it was never the acting, the writing just sucked. Yeah, the writing just kind of made him a maniac, and when he wasn't yeah. a maniac, he was this pathetic schlubby loser. And then in yeah. Zack Snyder's Justice League, it was uh, well, he he he, he, did, he he didn't really have much to do in that either, but he was, was he was more competent at the very least. Like the the weirdest thing about Batfleck is after watching Zack Snyder's Justice League, I'm like, oh, this is the arc you were going for. You're just not talented enough to do it. Oh, but wait, Will. The true arc would have been when he gets with Lois Lane. Oh, God, that shit. When, and then, oh, yeah. Red headed Lois Lane because Lena Lang just doesn't fucking exist. Right. No, the and one then, that actually has red hair. Right, they have that relationship, and then, um, Cuck Superman. Right, Cuck Superman. <laughs> Superman come back. Uh, Dark Side kill Lois, which, if anyone remembers from the Snyder cut, we saw a fucking skeleton Lois. <laughs> what? Do you remember that? The fucking like no, scene, like. Superman's fucking sitting there and he's holding like this fucking skeleton in his hands. <laughs> and Darkseid walks up and puts a hand out. Do you not remember this? I, I might. It was I in the like fucking a... epilogue. Oh. Oh, I don't I think. remember that. It's I in that you. movie. I know that for I a be fact. I believe that... you. That That's too specific for to be a lie. Superman That's way holding. too in line with Zack's writing to be made up. Like, it wasn't a dead Lois, right? That wouldn't have been enough. It was fucking Superman holding bones. a smoldering skeleton. <laughs> She's just a pile of bones, boy. And Dark Side got to get your revenge. With, Dark Side puts a fucking hand on his shoulder, like, "Hey, man, I, I feel you. No pussy does that to a motherfucker." And then ah! Superman changes into his red and blue, his red and blue suit, but evil, as opposed to hero in black and silver suit yes because that makes a lot of sense it was ah ah jesus christ as good as good as the snyder cut is i fucking hate that epilogue <laughs> that epilogue sucks <laughs> oh no that snyder cut had like three endings it's like okay they beat him oh okay Right. Now we have to establish the Justice League that'll never exist. Right. Because... Also, John John showed up, even though it was supposed to be Green Lantern. Right, and cause... effectively makes less sense. <laughs> yeah, which... <laughs> what the fuck is like, let, let me know if you ever need anything. Bitch, where were you two weeks ago? Like... Nah, man. I, I wasn't I wasn't confident yet. But well, seeing you scary. do the job for me, well, now I'm fired yeah, up. I... I'm ready to help you, as long as fire's not involved. That's my weakness. Like Captain Marvel, it's like, where were you at when we were fighting Thanos? Space. Where <laughs> were you at when we were fighting Steppenwolf? Uh, space. I was fighting Parallax. It's like, you know, no, you cloud. weren't. <laughs> Shut up, you don't know. But trust me, Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern can confirm it. That universe is dead. Uh, uh. <laughs> that universe is dead. Oh, my God. 
You know what they should do? In the fucking Flash movie, that's the movie where you have Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern. That's I'd actually be okay with that because it'd be so balls to the wall unexpected. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like the Flash can't really surprise me after watching Crisis on Infinite Earth, which, like, even for a TV special that is essentially DC's endgame, <laughs> um, <laughs> Down to having the sacrifice in the main character saying their quoted line. <laughs> you have failed this universe. <laughs> Fuck out of here, Oliver. Um, but it's like, you know, you can't be, it's like they had 60s Robin. They had Lucifer. It had a visual cameo from Titans and Doom Patrol, I suppose. Um <laughs> They just they just they showed some clips to say, hey, these universes exist. I mean, they had a uh, big beefy Tom Wellington. Oh shit, that's another thing we should talk about too um, before we jump to the other ones. Uh, just yeah. briefly, um, you know, they had Tom Tom, Tom Welling. Is it Tom Welling? Yeah, I call him Tom Wellington because I I've... Wellington. <laughs> Wellington, Wellington, Tom uh, Wellington, get out here and be the Superman. Yeah, it's just like they had that. They brought back fucking Superman Returns as Kingdom Come soups, <laughs> eating Tyler Hecklin soups before he got really, really good with Superman and Lois. Like, I'm like I don't really think good. you could. It's like, oh yeah, you can give me '80s Batman and Batfleck, but that's not gonna top fucking Hecklin Man and Superman Returns Man being redeemed. Like, it's oh no, heading through a city with their PS2 graphics. Oh. <laughs> the PS2 graphic. <laughs> I'm just like it's like, hey, I'm sorry, man. You know, Lucifer talking to Constantine to help Diggle get it uh, to bring somebody back to life. Somebody, <laughs> some fucking person. I don't I forget, fucking know. I forget who. It might have been Oliver. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, yeah, because he became the Spectre. That's right. Um, what? So, yeah, Oliver Queen becomes the Spectre. <laughs> in, in... Oh boy, that'd be some shit. Just having you watch. The, the five-part series of cry Oh, yeah, the best part of, like, you know, Black Lightning showing up. And at the end, they essentially established the CW Justice League with Kate Kane Batwoman. But ever since, in all the promo photos ever since, because she left, she's been photoshopped out. <laughs> <laughs> and then since then, you know, now we have Javicia Leslie Black... Bat I almost called her Black Woman. <laughs> Black Woman. <laughs> streets of gotham are safe now that the black woman is here and it's just a black woman it's there's no costume it's just a black lady <laughs> what are her powers she will give you a stern ass talking to she makes sure you never it's do a, that shit again it's, just, it's like hey motherfucker don't do that shit it's like oh shit <laughs> it's a black woman i like <laughs> Damn. All right. I'll stop my life of crime for this. Joker's about to set off a bomb in the city. Call the black woman. She shows up. Hey, black motherfucker. Woman. Stop doing that shit. Well, well, well. Looks like we have a full middle. And just smacks him with his own crowbar. Ah, oh, oh, she's so mean. Oh, shit. Oh, whoa. Batman doesn't do this to me. I'm not Batman, bitch. Oh. I'm a oh. black woman. <laughs> And just beats him with his own crow. The Joker would not be a problem if <laughs> if the black woman was on duty. <laughs> There'd be no issues. I'm just imagining the fucking CW font black woman on <laughs> Tuesdays <laughs> at nine. Tuesdays at nine. Black woman. <laughs> and I did a reaction to the first episode of season two. People keep saying it's good and I don't believe them. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day I'll go and give it a chance. But it's it's hilarious that they photoshopped old Kate because they recast Kate. So it's like, well, so you're gonna put her back or the new chick? Right, right. So I I really don't want to talk about the CW shit. There's one thing I have to fucking ask. Okay. So the new Batwoman is like a new character. Like she's not supposed to be Kate Kane, yes. right? It's Ryan Wilder, a a, okay. a a newly created OC with probably one of the most offensive backstories I've ever seen. They said, we're going to give you a bisexual black woman who's a superhero, and but also she's a criminal and she's homeless and her mom got killed in front of her. I see. Okay. So she's, check. she's a criminal homeless orphan. Right, and I'm so like, check all the tone deaf boxes. Got it. 
God forbid she's just God forbid she's just black and bisexual. Like it's not hard enough being both of those things. Right. Okay. So what I'm asking, I heard that apparently Kate Kane is a figure, like a central plot point of a upcoming of like a season. I, I don't know if you so. Been, she don't got believe... recast. Uh, uh, no, I right, believe she... so because she got recast. Okay, that's what I'm about to ask. So it's not the same lady that played her, but it is the same oh. character. Yes. Okay. It's, it's the old, uh, the old switcheroo, the old Terrence Howard, Don Cheadle. It's the same person. Okay. So they don't look alike, only, but it's the same right. person. So originally, Kate Kane was written out, and we got yes. OC Batwoman, but then yes. Kate Kane come back, but Kate yes. Kane different lady. Exactly. See, okay. yeah, yeah, you get it. Yeah, okay. Ice, you get it. It, it. That that would be confusing to someone that's not a comic uh, aficionado such as myself, right. where they do this shit all the time. <laughs> uh, um, the brief thing I did want to mention as we scoot away from that flash topic or limp, um, is evidently they're bringing back Smallville following Superman, but as an animated series. Which I'm like, thank you. Someone is listening to me. Saying oh, bring cool. back these, yeah, bring back these old properties as animated shows. You know? so that that was some info that Tom Welling dumped a couple weeks back, and just no one is talking about, even though that's no one's talking about it. Like, immensely interesting. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, wow, it's it seems like it's a pretty good time to be a Superman fan, unless you like Henry Cavill. I guess that's true. Hey, um, did you did you ever talk about the? Did you ever talk about the apparent new like Superman reboot from Abrams on here? Oh fuck! Uh, I think we did briefly. The, yeah, did Black Superman. Okay. Were you talking right, about Black, Black Superman? Black Super oh. Yes, Black. Superman. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the the whole Tina Hesse Coates thing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We did because uh, I and a couple other Black people kind of don't want a Black Clark Kent. Oh it's really? Like, like my. I don't because it actually kind of breaks my suspension of disbelief. Okay. Just like uh, to, it, I don't think there's a good way to, I mean, I'd be curious to get your opinions, but I don't think there's a good way to pull it off where it doesn't feel like it's pandering. So it's like either mm -hmm. you try to play it straight and just do, Oh, um, alien crashes to planet who happens to be black in the middle of fucking Kansas, that's gonna bring up <laughs> immediate problems. Like in the middle of like bumfuck country town nowhere. Yeah, okay, right. that works out well for his upbringing. It sure. And the only weird thing is he has superpowers. Yeah, okay, sure. He he has no <laughs> issues. Just just it's it's hard for him to hide his powers. Yeah, all right. Or well, thing, or oh, you make God. him inner city, and it's annoying as shit. <laughs> it's annoying it's like, as shit. Because the Dakota verse and all the milestone characters, there is a black Superman. His name is Icon. His so I'm like, Icon. why not do somebody new and interesting, like I don't know Calvin Ellis or Val Zod? You know, you know what's more interesting than just a black guy who's Superman? Fucking Super Obama. <laughs> well, okay, tell so me that story. Right. So that's the thing, right? Um, I mm. don't know if this is true or not. I think the rumor is they're using Calvin Ellis, not Clark Kent. I hope so, because um, I I thought I saw somewhere that they were pitching it as a period piece, and that that irks my soul even more, because um, I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 stop putting no. black people in problems in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have stories, like, we exist. It's like, look, the, the timeline of blackness does not stop. It, 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 the, you know, it doesn't just hit the end of civil rights, and it's like, and then everything was better, and everybody according is... The, according to the Republicans, it does. <laughs> what, what else do you want? We gave you Martin <laughs> Luther King. No, no, you killed him. Like, <laughs> you killed different. him. Different. It's different. <laughs> You can't, you can't say you gave us something when you killed him. Yeah. Took him away. The CIA giveth, the CIA taketh away. <laughs> the, CIA, the CIA never giveth. Right. They gave they us only, crack. They only taketh. <laughs> it's like, well, here, in exchange for taking Martin Luther King, we'll give you drugs. It's like, that's not a good 
think. <laughs> it was not a good a deal good at game. all. But no, my my pitch is I'm like, if you want to do a new Superman, do do Mexican Superman and make it an immigrant story. Does that not make a fuck ton of sense to have two his have two Latin farmers discover a baby in a field and try to raid uh, raise him against you know I don't know systemic oppression as a brown child and then yeah. it's like oh yeah you have to learn how to embrace your historic culture as a Kryptonian but also a Hispanic American. Yeah, see, this is the thing with it because like. I don't know if you need to hire me for shit. I don't know what it is. Sony needs to (laughs) capitalize on their Mexican spider woman too. I don't know. I don't know. I love seeing black people in roles, but it's just some certain things get on my fucking nerves. (laughs) I think, I think part of the thing is like the Kryptonian part of Superman's always going to be a hurdle. If you, the best way to put this, if you like frame his story in a different light, the Kryptonian part's always going to be like a really big hurdle to kind of get over, right? Because right. like, it's not just he identifies with like a certain, that's always a weird thing too. He's always going to associate with like the race that he looks like, but he's not yes. actually, right? Like, right. He's just he's, humanoid, but he's not right, actually he's human. humanoid, right? And I've always found it weird that, like, huh, for some reason, all of the humanoid aliens in space are mostly white. It's quite curious. <laughs> it's quite curious how that works out. Yeah, like, it, and it, I don't know. I'm, I, like I said, I love seeing, uh, you know, black people get work and, and black people get roles. But I yeah, also it's... kind of, I kind of want room for more because, like, all these beautiful milestone characters, like we're just now, we're just now attempting a Static Shock movie, and it's like you know they're like um, Icon and Rocket would be way more interesting, I think, than a Black Superman could ever be. Because like, I'll be yeah. honest, I think Malik's probably the only Black Superman fan I know. I'm not saying they don't exist; they do. <laughs> um, but Malik's probably like the the biggest one. Okay, I know because like as far as super like as far as superheroes we relate to. I'd say most black people relate to like Spider Man because it's just like, well, he lives in the right, city, yeah. um, has to deal with rent, he has bills, probably lives with his aunt. Like, this is like you look at Spider Man, it's like that man could be any race. Peter Parker could be any ethnicity. Yeah. He, Peter Parker goes beyond race, but um. Well, yeah, I, I think that. I, was, well, I mean, that's also kind of the way like his suit's kind of designed, right? Like, I don't think that's initially right. why it was like that, but like he's. He's covered from head to toe, so, like, you can put yourself in his shoes, right? And, like, you'll always have some way to relate to him. Superman's not quite the same. Right, and and I think especially if you're talking about this symbol of American liberties and freedom, what may work to hearken that better than an immigrant story? Because it's essentially kind of what it is. I mean, he's created by two Jewish men, you know? Yeah, like... It's like... Having an immigrant story with actual immigrants, is that not, it, would yeah. that not be interesting to introduce the subtext? Like, imagine the parallels of Superman integrating, you know, uh, like Mexican culture in with his Kryptonian culture and seeing how that might change, how his costume is designed. Yeah, it, you know? it practically writes itself, honestly. It, like It should, and yet no one thinks... I mean, the, they have Asian Superman in the comics. I'm like, that's interesting. A Chinese Superman? Why didn't anyone think of this before? Why did it take so fucking long? Takes takes a really long time, huh? You know, it's curious why that happens, Well, It's curious, but... Uh... It's very curious. <laughs> um, it's strange. Yeah, just, yeah, Superman is a... He's a he's an interesting boy, but... um. You want to talk about some Marvel shit real quick? Yeah, enough of this fucking boring DC stuff. Let's talk about Marvel. <laughs> God's sakes. Oh, boy. Um, I mean, fucking talking about so Superman. Jeez. Superman. That, that nerd. <laughs> fucking <kid>. nerd. <laughs> fucking nerd. Um, fucking farmer boy. On his field with his tractor. <laughs> He's on, on his, weeds on his and field corn. with his glistening abs and biceps. Oh, what a fucking uh. geek. <laughs> Which like that's that's what we need a fucking flying Mexican sex symbol. Oh my god, that's yeah, that's what the people need a a flying sex symbol. Um, anyways, let's talk about some some random Spider Man shit. Uh, yeah, so yeah, evidently, yeah. thanks to boys existing, we got a, a bunch of kind of leaks for uh, Spider Man. 
and uh, kind of split. Um, so I, you know, spoilers for Way Home in a way. Uh, did you see the did, toys? I did. I got a brief glance at them. Let me actually pull the picture back up just so I can um, rem- remind myself. There's an interesting range. So we got we got a bunch of Funko Pops and a bunch of figures. Uh, we have uh, so we got three ish new suits for Spidey. Two of them are the same, and one of them. Um, <laughs> two of them are the same. <laughs> two of them are the same, and one of them is really one is cool. One is booty cheeks, and the other is booty cheeks with Doctor Strange circles. Ah, I see. Um, so like we have, he has a new red, black, and gold suit, which I think is butt ugly because it's a combination of the far from home suit and the iron spider suit, which are two suits that I'm not really a big fan of because one of them steals from miles and the other one just sucks. Yeah, that's pretty lame. I'm looking, I'm looking at it right now. That's pretty lame. Uh, it's then in contrast, there's the black and gold suit, which again, looks, looks like a, a suit. Stolen from Miles' video game because he has a he has a black and gold suit in his newest game, and I'm oh, like, did he? they? Yeah, and I'm like, did they see the game and said, I like that? That's another thing we'll take from Miles. We took his best friend. We took some <laughs> of his suit colors. Uh, yeah, just just take one of his suits, basically. Make it impossible for him to show up. Yeah. Um, basically, because I'm like, they're taking so much shit from him. Like, if they try to do him, what what is he going to be like? There's going to be, he's just going to be actually Puerto Rican. <laughs> Man, I really miss my friend Peter. But luckily, I've got new friend Miles to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> just this grown-ass man hanging out with his teenage boy. I'm also, hey, 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 not Ned anymore. I'm ganky. <laughs> I'm ganky. <laughs> Legally changed his name. <laughs> Oh yeah, he had to hide his identity too after Spider-Man got exposed. <laughs> hey, Mister Ganky. <laughs> the world's the world's not as you see it, Park. Uh, I mean, Miles. Uh, forgot you're not you're not Parker. You're, you're not different. Parker. Um, you're different. Jet web cycle. Good lord, these are these are some silly ass toys. Um, All right. Yeah. Uh, so Doctor the, Strange the vehicle... has a shovel. Yeah, I was about to say if I were an idiot, I would say that Peter is going to get a web motorcycle but i'm not so i know that that's just a toy but this... that, that would be funny it's like it's like why does spider-man need a motorcycle i don't know man why don't you have a motorcycle i'm saying that specifically sure. because i'm willing to bet that we got this covered has said that peter is getting a fucking helicopter whatever the fuck this thing is right yeah um, so suits eh you know it's, yeah, I'm not like really they a have big the regular... fan of the. I'm not a big fan of the MCU suits. Besides the I've... fucking uh, the one from Homecoming, I like that one. Yeah, like I like the the Homecoming slash Civil War suit. I even kind of like his proto suit, uh, his homemade one. I think that's actually good. It's definitely, yeah, like, yeah it this, is really, <laughs> it is really cool. What a broke person would get is just like some clothes from Walmart and a pair of welding goggles. That's what I imagine a fucking teenager with very little resource would make. Um, which still doesn't explain how he wears Nikes and has a Jan Sport. I'm like, you didn't get that at the thrift no, store, no, no, sir. No, 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 no. Don't worry about that's that. That's a don't lie. <laughs> don't worry about yeah. that. Don't worry. About um, that. <laughs> I like I like the black and gold. I hope it's all black and gold. I don't know mm-hmm. why the arms are red in one of these toys. That's a little strange to me. It's a little odd. Might be a color. Very thing. odd. Might be a coloring um, error. Might be. I'm I'm hoping so. But yeah, that red, black, and gold one is butt ugly because <clears> it's like. For starters, one of my issues with Spidey suits is that they're very over designed. Which is like, yeah, um, yeah. let me see if I can find you a picture. I found a picture that uh, some like an artist I follow did of his take on the MCU suit. And I'm like, wow, you fixed all of the problems. It was like three little things, and you, you fixed them all. But it's like, it has too many little details that it doesn't really need. Um, I th- that's an issue I have with a, with a lot of suits. Um, I'm, I'm yeah, it's critical of in terms of Marvel because I'm like it's Spider Man, not that it, crazy, you know. Yeah, like I think the little accents that they do all around his suit, I just find kind of weird. Right, they're made exclusively, I think, just to look different rather than you know look good. 
Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm very much of the camp of, uh, I'm just like, keep it simple, stupid. You yeah. Know, the kids like, it, it wor- it's yeah. worked for a long time for a reason. It's like... <clears throat> and and you can make little tweaks here and there, but it's yeah, just like um, yeah. I put it, I put it in the general, but it's just like I look at this, I'm like, wow, this is this is perfect, mm-hmm. and it it took so little to to change. It's like it's different, but it's the same. <clears throat> Let me see, what's this look like? Yeah, yeah, that fixes it. <laughs> it's pretty it's, good. It's like I'm like, wow, I'm like, you fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every, every issue I had, it's gone. <laughs> oh, huh? That's all it took. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, I like that. Yeah. That's better. I like that. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I I get why they're bringing in new suits. I'm sure this is gonna have a purpose. So it's gonna be like the upgraded upgraded suit where he puts uh, combines the Iron Spider with his new suit and maybe well, the I, black and gold is his and it, it, i guess and he's using strange magic so that um when i saw that i'm like oh boy are we getting spider totems because that'd be some random bullshit <laughs> some random stupid shit can you imagine if we got fucking toad like i like in my in my pitch of a uh, of no way home from like two three years ago where i i called the interdimensional six um and i'm still gonna keep mentioning that till the movie comes out see a trailer. <laughs> it was it was, it was but, um, Will's idea, by the way. He, it was. They he's, fucking he's, stone. He's, he stole it from me. He's seen no compensation for that, by the way. I just just throwing out that out there. So just I just want a little credit. Um but <laughs> wouldn't that be uh, in my version there were inheritors um come okay. like hot, or universe hopping. So there was like a moment where um Peter uh like the three Peters swing through the animated verse. <laughs> you get to see him animated, but like while they're chasing him, um. So just like okay. for a brief second, um, it's it just be like a cool cameo. But yeah, him doing strange magic, I'm like, are we doing totem bullshit? This is how you get into totem bullshit. Is bringing up spiders <laughs> and magic. This is how you that that'd be weird. Morlin, everyone's favorite character. Imagine if Morlin was the the video of a. Uh, not the video, the villain of Black Panther 2. It's like, <laughs> well, who are they going to fight? More loon and the inheritors. I'm More fucking loon. sorry. <laughs> uh, I like the way you said that. More loon and the inheritors. <laughs> like a band, More loon and the inheritors. <laughs> the web warriors have to unite. The web fight against more loon and the including web warrior black panther <laughs> um <laughs> wait that's so stupid it might work <laughs> that's so stupid it might work um yeah spider-man suits uh gotta get toy sales so keep making dumb ugly suits <laughs> I don't mean to be. I don't mean to be as pessimistic as I sound. I just come off. I don't that think way. you it's are because just, just I, who I, I am. No, I've I've seen like one or two people that like the, the red, black and gold because it's just it's it's over designed. Too much going on. It's like it has the same issue that the Iron Spider one does. It's ugly. Um, yeah. <clears> the <throat> I think another thing that I'm starting to realize is like the symbol for his like his Spider Man chest symbol isn't that. Good. Like the one I sent you, I think really works. Yeah, yeah, I think um, so because it's like slightly segmented. But this one is like all of. It looks like a weird techno spider. Um, it looks like it looks like they're trying to do their uh their venom symbol without their venom symbol, and then you have this black and gold, and we're like, well, we're not gonna do venom, but we're gonna give you a black suit anyways. So yeah, it's where you go. You go, I don't know. know. It, it, it's it's whatever. You gotta sell the toys. You sell the kids. Gotta sell the you toys. Know? You gotta sell um, the toys. And then, like the strange figure, I'm like, he just looks like strange from before. I mean, in the pops, <laughs> he has like a t-shirt and a shovel. So I'm like, what's this about? Who did he hit in the face? Um, he looks like I, a little yeah. Janitor. So I was under the impression Doctor Strange isn't in this movie that much. This makes me that's, think he that's, is. I hope he isn't. I don't want it to be like, oh, we're gonna do Spider Man, but instead of Tony, it's the Magic Man. Yeah, I. It's like, please don't. Yeah, let I'm... him be. Let him be on his own for a little bit. 
I'm on to Cameo. Again, if it were up to me, this whole fucking and I and I'm willing to if those leaks that Luke was telling me are true, I'm willing to bet Marvel wanted to do this as well. I wouldn't have done any of this interdimensional bullshit, right? I wouldn't have either. This all seems really dumb. <laughs> it's it's, it, it's a fifty fifty shot, and knowing that Avi Arad and uh, Amy Pascal are involved makes me very very nervous. Yeah. It's like they 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 made like a billion dollars with Far From Home and a and a shit ton of money and good reception with Into the Spider Verse. They're like, oh, well, we have it from here. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not why those movies worked. <laughs> It wasn't you. It wasn't you. It just Taking seems, credit for shit that wasn't because of you. Yeah, it just seems really weird to have Spider-Man stopping weapons trafficking in the first movie go to yes. globe-trotting Spider-Man fighting drone army Mysterio go to kind of works interdimensional Spider-Verse movie when he's like I don't know, 15 or however old he's supposed to be. I'm hoping he's a senior because I'm ready for him to be done with uh, <laughs> high pretty, school. I'm ready to be fucking done with high school. <laughs> right. Because it's like, look, man, like I I was a, I was in elementary school with Toby, man. I was literally. It, Oh, he he's gone. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Yeah. Um I'm 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 good on the the on the high school boy. Let him let him let him grow up. Be an adult, pay some bills, especially now that him we we got the movie with it. We uh, we can move on now. We 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 got the high school. Got we got we got it because like I think I think that's the reason that people kind of have complaints about him being in high school so regularly is because there's there's outside of the comics, there's like not an alternative. So if they had a cartoon, he was an adult they've done before and i don't know why they don't do it again they keep taking him back to high school it's like he can he can be an adult and the show can be for you know like families and kids it it can work just have to have good writing (laughs) yeah i think the thing for me was just that like the first movie was like really the first one where he truly felt like a kid and so i was like yeah this works right yeah that tracks yeah, everything the other two after are definitely that, grown ass men. <laughs> yeah, everything after I'm like, okay, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of done. You can't really keep doing this. He's uh he's he's getting older. <laughs> yeah, I think he's around my age actually. He's uh, he's Tom like twenty Holland something, is, isn't he? Yeah, Tom Holland's like twenty three, twenty four. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you can't. He, he's not gonna be able to do this forever, you know. <laughs> he, he he can only raise his voice so high because his balls yeah, exactly. have already dropped long ago. Exactly. You know, he, exactly. He can only say Mr. Stark like for so long until it's like <laughs> Mr. Stark, bitch. Like, <laughs> it's one of those things I think where like I watch this and I'm just I'm always gonna wonder to myself, God, I wonder what they would have done if Marvel like owned him completely. Because this really does feel like a bunch of back shit would have been. It's like it a lot of back and forth, different. like squabbling, right? Like it's, yeah, it's like wrestling with ideas and trying to make the best that you can with a shit sandwich, right? Yes. Like Sony says, we want this, we want this, we want this, and like, ah, god damn it, okay, right. we'll 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 try to make it work. Well, ah, fuck, right? I, and I can't. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, it was just, you know, like everyone's saying it's like, you know, this is why the Sony movies were better. And I'm like, well, Sony's the fucking <laughs> reason that these movies aren't better. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, well, eh. it's like you got a couple hits and then a, a, you you almost have as many misses if you do hits. Because like, you know, Spider-Man 1, 2, and in my opinion, Amazing Spider-Man, I think are all work. Um, But 3, 
and Tassim to are such like monumentally colossal fuck ups. It's, it's, it's almost just, kind of impressive. It's impressive that they made the same mistake twice. And then, and, and I think that's what everyone's scared of. It's like, we don't want you to make the same mistake a third time. I don't know what their obsession is with the Sinister Six. I don't know. They either. have wanted them in a movie. So like they, because remember we were supposed to get a Sinister Six spinoff solo movie. And I'm like, who are they going to fight? <laughs> who, who are they fighting? <laughs> Each other? Like, Unless you're doing superior foes, this isn't going to make a lot of sense, buddy. Superior foes as a movie would be great. Yeah, if I remember the leak, Spider-Man was in it. Was in that movie. Yeah. So it might as well have just been another Spider-Man movie. (laughs) You could have just called it Spider-Man versus the Sinister Six, but it's like, no, no. No. Sinister Six, coming to theaters July 7th. It's like, (laughs) no. No, I say. No. Nobody wants it. Like, Nobody if this is that. the only way that they could like appease Sony, where they're like, "All right, fine, we will do fucking Sinister Six. We'll do. We're doing multiverse shit. We'll just bring back the actors. We'll at least make a. Yeah. We'll make a blockbuster out of it. Whatever, right? right? Like, it's at this point, it's like appeasement, right? Now, again, this is all speculation. I don't know how involved Sony is, but from what I've seen, from what we've heard, from leaks and everything like that. It seems like they're a lot more involved than I thought they were. And it seems like they're the sole reason that I don't like MCU Spider-Man. <laughs> Which I can't fully take Disney out of the equation because I know they also right. asked for more money. Yeah. Um, Because Sony's kind of front-loading the, the production of it uh, financially. Yeah. And I think Marvel is handling the rest. Yeah. Like... Um, oh. <sighs> I'm not no, no, letting everybody's Sony at off. fault a little bit. Um, yeah, I like feel I'm bad not for John Watts though, because I feel like he's kind of back yeah. in the corner as a director. But you know, he gets to do Fantastic Four, so yeah. And he's I'm bad. I'm curious about one, who's going to write that, and two, how did he get that? Um, I think they, that's going to be where Tom's last cameo is too, because like him interacting with Johnny Storm makes all of the sense. Yeah, it does for sure. Honestly, I'm surprised that they haven't like been dropping hints at the four and like uh, they they might in spider-man who knows but i mean if and i guess this can lead us into our our i guess last topic talking about loki if they do oh, yeah. if it turns out that um oh for let me say spoilers for episode five of loki as we get into that of course. Um, so if if it turns out that that was the castle of Amortis. That might be like a really big stealth and it, it's like a really thin connection because Amortis is one of the forms of Kang and Kang yeah. is a descendant of Reed. Kang, that's my favorite thing is like Kang is black quantum mania. So I'm like, but if it's Amortis, is it going to be a black Amortis? Could it be a different Amortis? <laughs> what does well, this mean for the Fantastic Four? You know, the thing about time, Will, is that you get one black version. You're right. As we <laughs> saw, get, as we you, saw in the episode, as, there was a as, black as, Loki. As Loki has shown us, you get one black one. version, and that's it. That's all you yes. get. Postful Loki. <laughs> um, so... Let's uh, talk about geez. it. Uh, this yeah. was a really good episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes that I've seen since I stopped watching the show about three years ago. Um. Yeah, uh, a lot happened. Um, I don't know what it is. Like, episode five usually is my favorite episode of the Marvel show so far. Like, it was my favorite WandaVision. I think it was my favorite for Falcon and Winter Soldier. This is my favorite out of this one so far. I don't know what it is about their fifth episodes, but now I'm really worried about the last one. Because their finales are kind of 0 for 2, and I'm a little scared. Mm Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, what did you think about the episode? I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, they kind of red herringed us with the whole President Loki, and we saw Army of Lokis, and the, the Loki Gator was adorable. I would love a plushie of that. <laughs> um, um, there were a um, shit ton of stealth cameos, like the Thanos Copter and Throg and the Tribunal. And... Okay, so I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to rewatch it because I did not see any of that. If I had uh, seen the Thanos Copter, I would have flipped my shit. 
<laughs> Throg, Throg was the one that threw me off because it was it was almost a blink and you miss it. So you know how they go down to the little hidey hole? It does that pan and you see Mjolnir, but you see something hopping in a jar. Oh, okay. So it's Throg. I had to rewind it and I'm like, wait, what the hell was that? And you can see it's it's a little frog. If little the little helmet, I'm like, oh my god, it's fucking Throg. Wow. <laughs> put in a jar and buried underground i'm like that's wow okay like that that was what got me hype i'm like holy shit he did throw like of all the characters to do i thought it i almost thought it was like a mini version of um uh bojack thorsman who's my man bojack thorsman <laughs> um beta ray bill damn what all right <laughs> you can't you <sighs> I thought it was a tiny beta ray bill. Yeah, that's my that's been my nickname for him for a couple of years. I, say the I know he's not ray, a horse. The the bill disrespect. I I can't. <laughs> you, you can't reduce it down to that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> anyway, I, was, I had to remember his name. But yeah, what were kind of your thoughts about the episode? Um. Okay. So I didn't see the Easter eggs. I guess, or I wasn't looking as close as I should have. So I'll take a look back and kind of see them because. Uh, Everyone kept telling me of like, ooh, Immortus, and we you tell me where it is, and we'll kind of talk a little bit about it because um, this is one of the reasons I wish Marvel Luke was here because uh, he he mm-hmm. loves me and him love some Kang, and we can probably talk a lot about Kang, but fucking um, Kang. Uh, that was another one I called them said Phase Four is gonna be Kang, baby. Yeah. I don't know why, just I felt it in my soul. I'm like they're gonna do Kang. They're gonna do Kang, man. Don't do but, um, we was Kang. <laughs> we was Kang and shit. We was Kang and shit. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. Um, outside of the Easter egg stuff, uh, I like this episode. It's a lot better. Um, again, I really do think it's just my big problem where like, I don't think they do enough in every episode because this episode, this episode spends a lot of time kind of pussyfooting around like the main objective right a little find bit. the cloud go inside the cloud right yeah now the road to that still works out pretty well right we get like some nice character stuff with the other loki's uh classic, classic loki, loki. Dope. yes classic loki was cool um i liked i liked his story for the most part right like the tva yeah. he the tva didn't even care enough to go get him because he didn't die right. Yeah, because like he, he, he was he was isolated, so he wasn't really affecting the timeline. Then the minute he's like, "I want to go see my brother," and then those motherfuckers pulled up like, ah, 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 ah. "Yeah, like it makes shit weird." Or it's weird just because like the show is effectively like redoing Loki's character arc from Ragnarok and shit, but mm. it's doing it in a decent enough way that I'm still on board with it. That being said, is ne- is next week the last episode? I believe so. Okay. I believe it's a six episode. If round. if next week is the last episode, this is a story that I don't think got enough time to breathe, or I think needed a little bit more going on with it because it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot there. It's definitely moving, kind of light speed. Yeah. <laughs> like um. Go ahead. Well, I was just saying, like, I don't know. It felt like we kind of wasted our time in some episodes for effectively a story that could use a little bit more density to it. But um, as it kind of stands, again, last two episodes, I wasn't super huge on. First episode I thought was great. Second episode was, you know, it was slowed down a little bit, but, like, it was still, like, ramping up that mystery, right? Next ones after that were kind of oh they're stuck on a rock, okay, we gotta go to the thing. They fail, they get brought back. Uh, timekeepers aren't real. Whoa, and then I don't know. Last episode as well, it felt like a lot. Like we kind of talked about last week, a lot of shit got revealed. And it didn't really feel like that big of a deal, or it didn't feel yeah. super punchy to me. This episode at least brings back the tensity a little bit i'm like okay all right we're we're getting close to a finale it definitely feels like uh we're getting close to the end so i can feel it kind of ramping up a little bit yeah and um um 
like I'll say of the episodes, aside from like the finale of the or the the post credit scene of the last one, this is the first time I'd say I really had a re- like when I first uh like at first I thought it was the Living Tribunal, um, but it turned out it was just the the time keepers. I'm like, oh, <laughs> it was okay. just just the dumb time keeper. My feelings were so hurt. I'm like, oh, it, I'm like, oh shit, three faces controls the multiverse. It's the tribunal, and it's like, no, no, it's no, just no. The, the time keepers that exist. I'm like, oh fuck, all right, um, <laughs> it's a, it's fucking sixties bullshit character. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that would have been way more cool. But this <laughs> one actually got like reactions out of me, which I think is a solid sign. Like you know the Throg cameo, um, mm-hmm. classic Loki actually be. He used the the way they use his character was surprisingly compelling, I would say. Yeah. Um, and of them establishing the the hilarious chemistry between uh, Sylvie and Loki, um, or I mm-hmm. guess yeah. Loki Prime, um, or something. There, yeah, there were a couple moments that actually like got, uh, like a a verb. Oh, um, Obi is coming back. Actually, made me really happy, and and like him hugging Loki. Uh, I don't yeah. know. It's like seeing yeah. Mobius. I'm just like I'm like Mobius is back. I'm just like wow. I actually like this character. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where like he comes back and it's like oh yeah, great. I'm glad he's back. Like it's, yeah, one it's of those like things uh, where, the fun has arrived. Yeah, I was I was genuinely upset when he went away, and then when they was revealed true. that he was alive, I was like oh Mobius is okay. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God Mobius is okay. What about no, Sylvie? Sh- huh? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I don't give a shit about Loki, but fucking Mobius. Don't. Oh, thank God. That's that's the weird thing is like as I'm watching this episode, I can't don't know because like they've been trying to get me on this Loki train the better part of almost a decade. Um and I just can't and it's not Tom. Tom's acting is actually very, very good and it's been yeah. great, you know, the whole time. But something about the character just does not like like the reason I've stuck around really, um the the world the world building of what the show has done is really intriguing mm-hmm. <laughs> intriguing to me um you know like sylvie's Sylv- sylvie's cool um but like of the loki's the one i'm most interested in is the fucking alligator i'm like all right <laughs> the alligator. what's his story <laughs> i'm not the one who got taken by the tva for eating the wrong neighbor's cat and then it pissed him off and i'm like Nah, man, give me give me the six episode limited series of what led to this Loki's demise. Like, yeah, what happened? Yeah, you know, what what is that like? Is like, oh yeah, that's another thing I think we have to wonder about. So, is the TVA taking in animals? Are there animal variants that like? Are there a bunch of birds that just got sent to a nightmare dimension then got swallowed up by parallax? Are there any the uh, de- Marvel the demon apes? bear? Yeah, are there any Marvel apes in this fucking uh? Yeah. Uh, this wasteland place. I mean, seeing Throg in a jar, I guess, implies that you know, um, he he was another variant that got whisked away. Which which Throg isn't really, he's not a Thor. He's just a frog that got the powers of Thor from a sliver of meal. <laughs> His story is weird as fuck. But uh, or, or maybe in this universe he is a variant. Maybe um, who knows? Got or got enchanted and turned into a frog. But yeah. Well, like the thing that all, the the thing that I yeah, thought go was gonna go, I'm sorry, the thing I thought was gonna go somewhere was Mobius saying like, "Yeah, I don't remember a alligator, uh, Loki." Right. Like, like I thought that was gonna go somewhere. Like he's not actually a Loki variant, but I, then they also then they also like broke it down with the multiverse like, was Like, well, he's green. He's mischievous. Yeah. <laughs> He's, mis- just he's, like, he's, he's mischievous for an alligator. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, well, f- like following their own logic, weird, weird enough explained it because like every no one is really sure. It's like, well, he has the horns. I'm like, yeah. Where do you get the helmet from? Like, like that. That was the one of the most interesting characters of the whole episode. Fucking alligator, because like, all right, what happened with you? <laughs> like, it's what? You no, know, what? What was what was normal up until you ate the wrong cat? <laughs> right, yeah. Like, were you a Loki that got turned into an alligator? Or have you always been an alligator? Timeline is all good. Ate the wrong cat. They're like, this gator's got to go. Like, what was... <laughs> um, 
how do we feel about Loki Cest? Because uh, I'm rather impartial to it. I'm very indifferent. I'm like, I mean, like I said before, and it's still very weird. It's still very weird. Is it not simply masturbation of the highest degree? I guess kind of. You know what? You sold me on it. It's just masturbating. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's it works. This, this is how Loki is. But what if I told you? Yeah. It was masturbation with extra steps. <laughs> All right. Let me let's get one thing out of the way. Um this Loki show pretty much just been hinting at it's putting a lot of time shit more than that though based on the uh, fucking Immortus call out that's apparently in this episode that I have to go back and see if I can find. They so uh, I I uh it was Mitch who said that was his castle at the end of the episode. Okay. I'll take people a look. Think it's, yeah, some people think it's Doom. Some people think it's Immortus. So right. That's I, speculation. It, it's more likely to be Immortus. Um, it probably is, which is, that's a it's a pull, but with, with Ant-Man coming, that makes sense. Yeah. Kind of. um, Judge Renslayer as well, um, being she kind of had things with uh, Kang, if I remember. Yeah, yeah she, you're right. Um, God, she's so cute. <laughs> she, she is a little cutie, isn't she? She's cute. It's a, it's a, such a bad, bad lady. Well, she's not even bad. It's just her and Sylvie have similar goals. Uh, yeah. 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 Like that, that one line that B15 said is just like, oh no, you want it, but she needs it. It's, yeah. yes. I'm wondering if they're outright building him up. Or if these really are just Easter eggs. That's a good... I mean, this is... I'd say the perfect place to plant it. Because, like... Well, here's my thing. If Kang is in this show, I feel like we would have known about it already. I don't think that they could have hidden that. Which... So I guess that's the one thing is if it actually is a mortis, how they're gonna separate that from Kang. Um I, I mean think... it's like it's the same dude, but it's different dudes. Dude. Right. Well, my theory for a while, I don't remember if I told this to other Luke yet. I don't and I know I don't I don't I know I didn't tell it to you. So this has been my theory so far. Right. My theory is going forward, um, not in phase four, but into phase five, because I don't think phase four goes past, I don't know, fucking Spider Man, I think. I think it, I, uh, might be right. I don't know, phase four is, uh, is it four? I think the last one is into phase four. Although okay. It, it, it's like the beginning, I think, of 2023 is around the time that we know it'll okay. be having as much stuff. But go Fair ahead. Enough. So here's the kind of the key thing, right? If Kang shows up in Ant-Man, the main hope right now is that he becomes a bigger threat past that movie. And so yes. my big brain prediction right now, phase five, we are going to get a series of movies that will each have a different villain in it. For, co for regular fans, they'll think like, okay, so this is just another character from the comics. For us comic book fans, we'll know each one of these characters is a version of Kang the Conqueror. Oh, oh God. Oh, fuck. Part oh, of me is so thinking, oh, part of me is thinking they're going to have I... all these different villains and the big twist for that phase is going to be it's all the same dude. Because I'm, I'm think because I'm, I'm looking at what we got coming down the pipeline between now and uh, so it, it's looking like the last thing, uh, Fantastic Four, which I'm imagining is coming in 2024. Right. Wouldn't it? Um, we got, Imagine like, Fantastic Four, which is like a really long ways away. Whenever yeah. Fantastic Four comes out, how sick is it that if we have all these movies between then and there with all these different villains... Fuck, that does make a lot of sense. Fantastic Four goes like, hang on, wait a second all these different villains have like a very similar temporal reading, wherever the fuck 
comic book science, they say. Yeah. And they go, let's look into this. And then it's revealed, oh, I'm building a council of Kangs. <laughs> Wait, oh shit, that's gotta be the name of the episode, Council of Kangs. <laughs> Like you're you're laughing, but it's no. But that's so so bonkers. It kind of makes sense, especially with like that makes sense. Fantastic Four is the last one, and he's a Richards, right? Um, Unless Blade somehow cucks it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Um, I'm curious about like what gonna do like we know we're getting gore the god butcher and love and thunder right um we don't really know who we're getting in multiverse of madness rumors for wakanda forever i think or namor could be doom don't know anything about marvels we know kang is going to be in quantum mania don't know who's going to be in guardians 3 um but we're got and we got a couple movies dealing with like time bullshit like those are all the ones we got now. So if that's a lot of setup, and then next year, um, and next year is starts with Strange and ends with the Marvels. I think we're getting a lot of so, space and time bullshit in the next couple of years. Yeah. So, so Council of Kangs makes a lot of sense, actually. Right. So take this with a grain of salt, because I've come up with ideas, mm -hmm. and they don't pan out. And I end up hyping them in my mind, and then I'm utterly disappointed by what we get. But if there's a cool way to do this, it would be to slowly set up a council of Kangs and have everyone be like, what? They were all the same, dude? Yeah, which that, that could work. But here's the thing. There's, there's a way to make it work. Or it balances being creative and compelling, but also acknowledging the fact that it's a little bit silly. It's a but tiny it, bit silly. It's a tiny <laughs> bit silly. But the thing is, we have the fucking Council of Reed. So it makes sense. Like, so for like comic nerds, like, yeah, that makes sense. And if Kang, you know, who's traveled all these multiverses and had all these lives, probably knows. That's what the fucking Council of Reeds is. So it's like, how do I get ahead of my, you know, ancestor? The Council of Kangs. It's not, right. look, it's not though, it's far from the worst idea. Because it's like, you don't, you don't have Kang the Conqueror as just a one-off Ant-Man villain. I mean, Ghost right. is still out there. They didn't kill her. Right. So, and like, and here's the thing, Will, because I'll do this for you as well. The Council of Kangs exists in the Marvel Universe. There's, I mean, it's already a thing. Up. He's had a lot of name. He's had a lot. There is a Council of Kangs. Oh my so God, you're right. There, so there is a Council why, of Kangs. This right. So that's ever. why I'm just thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder if they're going to do this. Because it would be it uh, would be a little silly. You're right. It would be a little silly. But if you play your confused. cards right, this is a pretty big step up from Thanos. Not to be confused with the Council of Cross Time Kangs. Right. <laughs> all took a, a group of aliens who all and other beings who took up the guise of Kang after killing alternate versions of Nathaniel Richards. Right. That is. We don't count that. that. Is, that's the. <laughs> They exiled Kangaroo the Conqueror. The Council of Kangs was eventually recreated as part of the Kang Collective. Right. So the, the moral of this oh. is Kang has a oh. few councils associated with him. That's... Because he's such a dumb fucking time travel enemy. Jesus Christ. Kang, you, you dumb fucking idiot. God. Uh, so, again. Uh, what'd be weird have... is, like, if he showed up in Marvels knowing his... Uh, uh, tumultuous isn't the word. Uh, 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 molestery. One would even say rapey history with Kara Danvers. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, can we... Uh, we can skip that part. But we the can, rest we of them... Can... We can skip that. <laughs> For Ramatut. 
of Kings, Lord of the Seven, King, the Scarlet Centurion. Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's a lot. And there's I a lot. How, I forgot how fucking annoying he is. Yeah, if, Which, if, if, if he's the if he's the main villain of like he he's he's a shit. He's a shit. And of course it would be a Richards. Of course a goddamn Richards would be one of the biggest pains in the ass across time and space. Uh, not bad enough that Franklin Richards fucking exists and he's just a walking mistake. Right. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah. No, it's just, just like one of the two of the most dangerous super uh, superheroes in existence had a child. Oops, he's a he's an Omega level mutant. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. Don't you hate when that happens. It's then yeah. dot 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 this asshole comes into being. <laughs> Uh, yeah, wow, what a shit. Um, anyway. Do you have any uh, other thoughts on Loki? Anything we're thinking about coming for next week? I mean, if it's um, Mortis and we're setting up Council of Kangs, then I don't even know what I'll do. Um, <laughs> now, again... I just hope the finale is good. I do, too. We need a, we need, yeah. we need a strong finale. Again, here's my thing. I don't even care if... Kang's not like behind everything like everyone's saying he is I just want a good finale I just want something that ties us all up it it doesn't have to be Kang no it doesn't have to be right and I'll tell you what I'm even willing to bet Kang possibly will die in (laughs) Ant-Man if that happens I'll be a little upset but I'm willing to concede right and if, if Kang gets killed by fucking Ant-Man, I might throw both of my shoes at the movie screen. <laughs> it's, you'll, just, yeah. you'll just hear, fuck this! Yeah, so who knows? It's George I, Bush and start throwing shoes. I was saying, but I think Marvel League would cause a fucking earthquake and just like... <laughs> fucking... We'll be in our theaters like, oh god, I sense a disturbance. Luke, a Luke must have gotten to the end of the movie. <laughs> Marvel Luke's fucking pushed the earth closer to the sun. Oh no, that'd be hilarious is if he dies in Ant Man and um just like the post credit scene at the Council of Kank going just like damn shame, we lost one. Oh, time to get another one. It's just a bunch of <laughs> Look, that, like, well, that, that didn't would, work out how I thought it would. That oh, would well. make me totally okay with it. That would yeah. make me totally fine. If at the end they just, just say, Damn. It's a big red herring. Right. Yeah, a total red herring, exactly. If they just say Dude. damn. All right. Uh <laughs> let's let's uh, send another one. What'll be great is if he like dies in Ant Man, do the post credit scene. He shows up in Avengers Five and Ant Man and the Wasp. Are like, wait a minute, did we kill you? He's like, I mean, he's like, oh, you thought that was the only one? You that was that was young Buck Kang. All right, this is yeah. this is grizzled, aged Kang. The gr- grizzled Kang. Grizzled Kang. He just turns into uh, Denzel Punished Washington. Kang. <laughs> Punished Kang. Fucking like, I instead bet. of uh, being Jonathan Majors, it's Denzel Washington as Kang the Conqueror. <laughs> Boy, can you imagine that? An old Kang the Conqueror? Played by oh, Denzel my... Washington? Played by Denzel Washington. <laughs> that would actually be pretty you. cool now that I think about it. If, I, if he could be anything, I would want him to be Blue Marvel, though. Yeah. But they may even add, hmm, Blue Marvel? <laughs> A name I used in a previous life. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Look, I'm saying oh they can do whatever they want, right? Like yeah, they can Kang totally... the Conqueror, because he does whatever he wants, and nobody likes him. Yeah, exactly. Outside they of could. Earth Midas they can just make characters straight up like, oh, that's just another Kang, right? You can throw people Kang. off the scent because you know people who Wikipedia this shit, so yeah, they'll just have he's like probably he might be worse than Mephisto, if not as bad. <laughs> Like, Mephisto makes random bullshit happen, but Kang is random bullshit. Like, he's the bullshit. Like, can you imagine? That's the that's the villain team up we need. Kang and Mephisto Kang and causing Mephisto. chaos and destruction throughout time and space. Even Apocalypse be like, I need them to get the whole fuck out of here. <sighs> well, oh, Will, we talked a lot about Kang, Dude. but now it's time to talk about the next big feature. The one that's going to change course, the Marvel Universe as we know it. Up, the upcoming triumphant midquel that is a uh, Black Brave Widow. Brave Black Widow. 
I don't give a shit about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one interested in this movie, and it is getting very average reviews. I I will see it. I'll see it when I can. I'm not paying thirty dollars for it. <laughs> don't 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 hurt yourself. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going out of my way. Thirty but, uh... quid. Thirty quid to watch fucking Scarlett Johansson on the screen. <laughs> that... <If> you... it's... <laughs> Yo, if you fucking rock him, mate, I'm not watching. Yo, if you fucking rock him, mate. <laughs> or, or, to, or to watch Scarlett Johansson CGI flip. Don't think so. Hey, bloody moving mad, bruv. You're ah. moving mad, bruv. Black Widow, 30 fucking, quid, bruv. Fucking yardy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh. I mean, like, everybody has said that, uh, and I, I finally found out what the reason was. It's fucking Ike Perlmutter is why we didn't get this movie so long ago. Yeah, yeah, he just you know hates women. Um, but accurate, very accurate. He he hates many people. When women is one of them. Um, but Blackwood, yeah, I mean everybody's like we should have got this like six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, at at the latest after Civil War. Um, yeah. You no, know, honestly, I would have taken this instead of Captain Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, it actually kind of would have made a little bit of sense. It's like, oh shit, that's where she was, and then she dies in Endgame. It's like, oh no, oh yeah, no. Exactly. But this, like, I feel like Kevin was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because everyone's like, look, everybody wants you to have a movie. I want you to have a movie. She, like, she deserved a movie. She did. I, yeah, I wanted her to have a movie. I think she's more interesting than Hawkeye. Erica in this is. universe, yes. <laughs> I will give you that. <laughs> the universe does matter. Um, yeah. But it's Black just like, cool, it, yeah, it just feels it's too late. She died two years ago on our real earth time. Right. And it's sad. And it was sad, but it's like her death got overshadowed by Tony. Um, well, like massively because he died for all of our sins. So, yeah, I think the other thing too, is just, I don't know if black widow really stuck out to me as like a, as like a fan favorite character outside of maybe Winter Soldier, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's one of those things where like she died. Here's a movie. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. It's like it. So, the so movie. Let me let me I... tell you the one thing though, real quick. The line in the trailer that came out that kind of made me, that kind of made me think to myself like, well, this movie is worthless. <laughs> like. Oh, no. Um, someone says something Taskmaster is creating an army of widows and the only thing in my mind was who fucking cares who <laughs> fucking cares <laughs> you, you, what you is know? an army of widows going to do Fucking, we have a TV show where they're making super soldiers. That's a big deal. An army of widows, who fucking cares? I hate it because you're right. Like, the more, the longer I think about it, the worse it gets. Like, like, right? <laughs> like, you know, I mean, in the time period that it's set, we've already had an alien invasion and a robot that tried to drop a country on the planet. Like a, a army of 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 powerful women. I mean, bitch, the U.S. With the, they have those too. The fuck, yeah. Oh no, but they're like super spies. They're like green berets. You better watch out for they'll wrap their legs around you and choke you with their thighs. And it's like, yeah. Fucking... Congratulations, you've been reading my journal. Anyways, like, is, it's no. That's that's. <laughs> I hate that you're right because it's like I'm fine I mean, with the. I'm what are they gonna do? The small, yeah, I'm fine with a small scale movie, but like after everything we've gotten, an army of widows is not a fucking big deal to me. Well, like it's not like, something that requires this big fucking plot, right? Like, like oh, at okay, worst, fucking fucking carpet bomb them. Who cares? Like at worst, Jesus. I mean, yeah, Iron Man was <laughs> fucking drone striking with his own body. Was the drone? Yeah, in 2008. No. So, 
Yeah, and I'm about to say, this is also overshadowed by the fact we're getting an Armor Wars show where a bunch of people are probably going to get Iron Man armors. And I'm like, okay, that's a big deal. An Iron Man armor in every fucking country? Yeah, that's not going to end well. Fucking an army of widows. I don't know. The CIA does what it does anyway. Like, big fucking deal, right? (laughs) Like, Oh, that's a... that's. Ah, uh, man, that's sad, because that's a good point. It's like he's he's creating an army of widows. It's like, I mean, at worst, what he'll take over a country, and then we'll just uh, drone strike them and say it was for diplomacy. Like, yeah, we do that anyway. It will blow, like, it's like, oh, my God, Taskmaster has Germany. It's like, at once, do it again, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I... Also, okay, so like here's my get that far from Europe, (laughs) right? So here's my other thing as well, right? If at any point Taskmaster says, "I have a bomb, I'm gonna blow something up," then this movie is doubly worthless because that also means the screenwriters don't believe in their fucking script because (laughs) it's not an army of widows isn't good enough. He has to have a bomb, or she. I heard heard that. uh, I, I heard that Taskmaster didn't talk in this movie. Does do they not? I don't know. It'd be funny. <laughs> It'd be funny. It, not a word, just the whole movie. It's like, what, what's your deal? He just shrugs. Just has, anyone hands. Made the, has anyone made the comparison that Taskmaster looks like the Crisis dude? Oh my god, no. Everyone's been saying he looks like a Power Ranger. Same thing. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's been going on with his designs recently either, because like the only one that seems to have kind of gotten him right. Well, I do know exactly why, because of China. Like, um, closest one is probably the Spider-Man one, and he looks great. Then like yeah. the Avengers one looks dirt ugly, and then this one <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, this one is just kind of like the the goggles really. Yeah, the goggles is what ruins it. Like the the teeth, okay. Be cl- like just 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 because China has a weird thing about skulls, yeah. Um, yeah. Which I'm like, I mean, you can still do it, but kind of keep the original, and not have them be spooky, scary skeleton man, right? And just like the helmet. There's a whole discussion about China kind of, you know, taking control of our media industry and everything, but that's another that's besides the point the point is go to ordinary things and watch his coverage on all of the china right right (laughs) um here's the thing i saw a plot leak all right so here's a here's a plot leak for those of you that are worried about spoilers this is your chance to get out now for you know to keep keep i'm still gonna see it even even if any of the spoilers are true that said, to keep your audible virginity, you know, you might want to, yeah, might want to, you no. want to close out. Don't take um, my virginity. <laughs> I thought you said ow. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> a, a dick to the ear will probably have the same reaction. <laughs> no. Well, it depends on the size, but it's true. Um, <laughs> needle dick. <laughs> needle dick. <laughs> Pencil dick. Um. Shit. What was it about? Okay. 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 So apparently, there's a plot leak. Which also triply makes this movie worthless. Oh. That uh, Taskmaster's whole motivation is that Black Widow killed their parents. If oh. that's true, and we already got that with Winter Soldier, Bucky. Yeah, like yeah, like we already got that. <laughs> Ooh, bitch, you're an orphan. Woo. So, so is here's... so are half. She's she ain't got no parents neither. Right. So... so, so here's the thing. I don't know if that's true, but I'm gonna make also another big brain prediction because I know a lot of people were saying. I think that I think the rumor was that this Taskmaster is a woman. Right. Which that's fine. I don't really care. His name like willing... Jonathan Masters or some shit. Something like that. Point. I don't. I don't fucking know. Uh... Who cares. No one cares about Taskmaster's real name. Oh, um, Tony Masters is his real name. Tony Masters, yeah. I thought you were. I thought you were talking about that fucking Thunderstruck or whatever his name is. Um. Oh yeah. My big brain prediction. Taskmaster is also a widow, but it's a widow that broke from their programming, and in order to take revenge on the Red Room or whatever, is creating an army of widows to do. 
whatever the fuck she wants. And I planted a bomb, and you have only a little bit amount of time to get the bomb before I blow everything up. <laughs> so if that's true, if that big brain comes true, which again, there's no reason to think it will. I've been wrong several times. There's no reason if to it think is, it won't, though, because like right, it's if, a it's a spy movie. If it's true, anything that's that obvious, that worthless, that fucking brain dead, I feel really bad for Scarlett Johansson if that's the case. I, I do too, because like I, I want her to have like a good sense because like I, for all I intents and purposes like she's she is an og she's been around since iron man 2 um she's been on were, this crazy ride for a while right like she did her due to shit she helped she helped die so we could get the infinity stones back yeah and of the two i'm like eh, drop the bow and arrow guy we can keep widow yeah makes good Again, conversation i say this having read some really cool black widow stuff right like having oh. something more like winter soldier having it a lot more like subdued political thriller would have been cool the only problem is again this movie's way too late i mean and like in theory you could have even done a black widow 2 set between uh infinity war and endgame about like what the fuck did she do then yeah she exactly on other, like that could have been interesting like and i think there's a time period between civil war and infinity war when she's on the run so i I'm think like, so. yeah explains the blonde hair because yelena in the green jacket because Yelena. And that's another thing too. Setting right? up fucking Yelena, which Florence Pugh is a great actress. So I'm not, yeah, I'm not yeah. worried about the acting of this movie. Like they have a good cast. I think it's the writing and the action set pieces. Um, I'm and, a little. Yeah. And if it, so this is set between civil war and infinity war. I believe so. Okay. If that's true, that also makes me upset. Or not upset. That makes me disappointed. Angry. Because that just means that's a whole period that could have gotten movies that would have been cool. Right. Where was was Ant Man two set during the same time? Ant Man two was set for. It was before Infinity, Infinity War. War right? Yeah, because it ended with the snap. Okay. Okay. I don't. I don't know why I asked. I don't give a shit about Ant Man, but. Um, Man of ants. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, just seeing that with, like, other characters would have been cool, right? Like, seeing Hawkeye during that time. Although I think Hawkeye, they said he, like, cut a deal or something. I don't fucking remember. But I still want to know what the hell that uh, I've got red in my ledger shit meant. It's like, sis, what's that? That's the story I would. Um, did, I, did I ever tell? I don't remember if I told this on this show or on uh, Marvel League. But um, one of my... It was like right after event it was sometime after avengers came out and i had a paper i had to do i could do um <laughs> paper like creative writing for a class i essentially did a fan fiction that was set up to how widow and hawkeye met and i think i made widow like a kgb agent and hawkeye okay. worked for shield they had okay. a run-in in the field but they had to come together as allies okay Oh, so this would have been the um what, what would have been was, like was, it would have been why uh one of them owed the other one a favor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like setting okay. up her meat and fury and everything. See, that's another thing too. We don't get enough of we didn't get enough of them being friends and shit. Right. And I to this day I still don't the the uh him having a, a secret family, I'm like had something and they cut it off because she couldn't have kids. That's my head cannon. No one will break that from me. <laughs> Had such strong chemistry. It's just like, no, you're just not comfortable with men and women being friends. I'm like, male and female friends don't talk like that. Same way that Finn was like, Ray, I have to tell you something. And it's like, oh, you was gonna tell her, you know, you gotta use the force. It's like, bitch, get oh my god. Yeah, fuck uh, off. Writers don't know how people talk. It's like some of y'all aren't having sex and it shows. Like <laughs> Some of y'all aren't having sex, and some of y'all don't have friends of the opposite sex, and it Will, absolutely shows. Will fucking slashing the jugular. God damn. Is J.J. Abrams getting pussy? No. <laughs> he has a son, J. J. and I don't believe it. J.J. Abrams 
much like Ben Shapiro, was quite <laughs> confused by the idea that pussies indeed get wet. What do you mean? That has to be some sort of uh, congenital disease. <laughs> Vaginas don't naturally lubricate themselves. And and, 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 don't care about your logic. It's like, bitch. That poor man's wife. Poor man's wife. He has three kids. Like you, like you have three kids and didn't know how vaginas work. I don't know oh how you God. did that. I didn't know you imagine, could fail upwards in sex. Imagine <laughs> self-reporting that fucking hard, though. <laughs> Congratulations, you exposed yourself as a as a fucking, fucking loser to the entire world. <laughs> oh God! Here to go, Hawkeye um, didn't. Hawkeye didn't know that pussies get wet. <laughs> That's that's the, the what reason. the hell's going on down there? Why are you? Why is your <laughs> pussy cry? Some kind of I can't I can't be with someone with a leaky. You know what? We're, I think I'm cutting it off there. <laughs> I think you I think your pussy's broken. <laughs> I think we're done. I think we're done. <laughs> this isn't productive. Oh my god, anymore. it's leaking, <laughs> Natasha. It's leaking. I don't know what to I, do. I hate the word leaking. <laughs> it's gross. Fuck some is this going? Leaking, some kind of leaking discharge. What's this thing going on at the top, Natasha? I mean, the clitoris? What is that? What even is that? Why is there a doorbell between your legs? I don't know. This works. I think I gets taught sex people. ed by Black Widow would be... That might actually be more interesting than the movie we get. But I'm, I don't know. I'm going to remain optimistic. I mean, like, like look. It was a two-hour expose of just Natasha te teaching Clint um, how the vagina works. <laughs> I mean, sure. It'd be like, well, I was worth ten dollars, ten fifteen dollars, sure. Because that was not at all what I could have expected. If only. It's right. Only. Here's the labia majora, Clint. He's taking labia notes. Majora. Has his glasses on, but like that shitty haircut from uh, Infinity War. <sighs> well, Will, do you have any other closing thoughts? Um. When are we going to get our, our uh, Black Widow Council of Widows movie? The Council of Widows. That's, that's the movie right there. I It'll mean. Natasha and Yelena and the other one. What is her the name? The other one. It's a third widow and I can't the remember. Third the third one. The other one. I don't no one know. remembers. <laughs> Jesus, what? what are, oh, God. No times and everything. Hmm. I don't know. Do you have any any closing thoughts, ideas? I'll check it if it's available. I'm not going to go out of my way to pay money for it. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, Claire. Her name is just. Her name is Claire Voyant. Get the whole fuck out. Please leave. Uh, you know, it's hard. To like comics sometimes it really is apparently there was one in uh, agent carter dotty underwood oh well that's not canon nobody cares about that oh. <laughs> isn't it isn't it like ret retconned now, or ret canon mm -hmm. now because uh uh jarvis showed up in the show in the uh in endgame i guess so i mean it's ret canon <laughs> if that Captain never happens. america went back in time does does Agent Carter still start Shield? Well, I guess she does. She was in the movie. Well, I mean, it was it was a branch timeline that the TVA probably purged. That's true. If... God, that's really dark now. Ooh. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> they killed them all. I said, mm, all right, all right, Cap. No, Had no, no, fun. no, 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 no. Because they said, yeah, the Avengers were supposed to go back in time. So Captain America was supposed to go back and do all that stuff. Will, don't you know? Captain Didn't America you was listen? supposed to get laid. It was, yeah. <laughs> it's in it's in the it helps the timeline stay consistent. Captain what if America I don't wanna... was supposed to learn how to pleasure a woman. Finally. And... And he did after he did. however many decades, <laughs> and in an accidental slip in with his almost girlfriend's niece. That's yeah, almost weird. girlfriend's niece. That's still, that's still weird. That kiss was so it's still awkward. Very still very weird. He had better chemistry with Bucky than he did with her. Yeah, but at least he made it. At least he made it back to Peggy. Oh God. Um, I guess two two micro things, and then we can close out. Okay. Um, 
one, uh, and it, this was weeks ago. Did you hear or did you see the controversy around Anthony Mackey not really understanding how shipping works? No. Um, he had made some comments about people that were shipping uh, Bucky and Sam um, that people <sighs> could have perceived that, as homophobic. <laughs> um, but I like, I, I'm kind of like, Put in, put it out on this because I'm like, I see what he's saying because he was talking about how um, uh, being gay is kind of being uh, not monopolized, but he, I think he said he felt like it's kind of being um, appropriated by Hollywood and that there's not enough representation of two men just getting along. Um, me, honestly, I just didn't see the chemistry that they had, and Bucky was hitting on his sister. So, you know, I'm not saying they can't be by. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that I didn't see it really, but then I yeah, went back I, and like, oh, they did do like knee to knee and shit like that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's speaking a lot more to what you just said that he doesn't really understand what how. I, I, I works. don't. Th- I don't think he knows how fandoms work. It's like, nah, man, everybody's gay until proven straight, and even still, right. little gay. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, I think there's a thing that came out a while ago, like Bucky and Sam. I think someone wrote a thing that like it's queer baiting. Um. Yeah, I can, like. I feel like I can point to more obvious versions of queer baiting than that. I don't Captain Marvel think. was queer baiting. A little bit. I can. I can say that a little bit. That but one was really bad, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm. I'm a still harp on that till they fix yeah. it. Because it's. You know. <laughs> she cried when she came back. Yeah. And like they had, she had a what a huge box full of Polaroids. Like, this is a two-bedroom house, and one of those bedrooms is for her daughter. Well, Will, why can't two women just be good friends? I'm tired of gal pals. <laughs> I'm give, tired me of gal pals. <laughs> give me lesbians. Give me lesbians, damn it. Give me lesbians, damn it. Give me interracial Air Force lesbians. Right. So, I feel like stuff like that can be a little bit more obvious. I don't know yeah. if Sam and Bucky was quite the same. Um, I didn't get it because like Bucky was clearly hitting on his sister. But I mean, hey, maybe both. Maybe, I think maybe... there's a lot that you can kind of say that like I think people recognize that. I think people see Bucky as queer coded, which I can kind of see, but kind of. I maybe? I I think part of it is always going to be like kind of like what we've talked about as well: fan expectation versus how it kind of plays out that's not to say that i don't think elements of queer baiting existed in these movies i think they really did play around with that in a couple of cases captain marvel but i don't know i think again i think this is the anthony mackie being an old dude not quite understanding how fans work i I just think he was just a little uh informed like i can i can see how um from the from a non you know just from like the average person you know, if, if you showed them superman and batman going on adventures and stuff together you know the average person would be like oh they're best friends but to some fans it's like i mean they're best friends but also yeah but also right? more <laughs> it's um they're beyond yeah it, it... There's a couple of things that I've been reading on it that I think are interesting, but I think at the same time, you kind of have to be careful with what you, what you say is one thing and it might not quite be that way. I don't know. Yeah. He probably could, he probably could have worded it a little bit better. He could have worded it better, but I, I, I see where he's coming from. Cause I think, you know, representation of guys being friends is, is very much needed, but also guys being lovers is, is also needed. We need both. Yeah. You know, being yeah, able to exactly. be sensitive with your homies is one thing. But also, dating your homies is another thing. Yeah. Um, kiss not, your homies goodnight. Kiss your homies goodnight, like a real friend. <laughs> you don't kiss your homies goodnight? <laughs> tuck your homies in. Tuck your homies <laughs> tuck in, your, bro. Tuck your homies <laughs> in the bed. <laughs> tuck your homies in, bro. But, I mean, I could see now I could see Sam and Bucky doing that. Yeah, that's fine. Oddly enough, because, like... <laughs> <laughs> like Sam gets in bed. So you're not gonna tuck me in? Fuck? Really? Okay. And just rolls over. Just rolls I could, over. Like I could see them <laughs> sharing a bed 
and, and <laughs> but still being like heterosexual at the same time. Like, yeah, I, I would can have, see. <laughs> it, I could see them having a strong bromance that never like gets too physical. So you're not gonna tuck me in, Buck. I think it was like all it, right. So it's like that. No, I get it. I, think, I get. It. I think Civil War had a really good. <laughs> it made yeah. me think to myself in Civil War, like, huh? They probably. They sleep at Steve's house, but they're in sleeping bags and they don't get along with each other. They're that kind of right. they, they sleep in the same bed, but they're like but they're like, hmm, all right, sure, you're gonna you're gonna steal all the covers in, huh? Is that it? All right. <laughs> you get ready Sam, for the kicking machine and your balls next. Well, see, now I can see uh just Sam, Steve, and Buck like sharing a bed. Cause like, what well, is <laughs> Steve's like, Hey guys, there's there's only a one bed house. I don't I don't know what you want to do. And they're just like so <laughs> You know, if you want to bunk up, we got a long trip tomorrow. I want y'all to sleep on the wooden floors. And just Sam in the middle of the night, just Steve. I want to be Little Spoon. <laughs> I want to. Tired of being Big Spoon. Can I, I feel, be Little Spoon? I feel, I feel safer as Little. Feel spoon. safer wrapped in your arms. Bucks, up a... Bucks on the other side. What about me, Steve? Huh? Getting ignored? Huh? We're gonna be dual Spoon. Hmm. It's, a, it's all right, buddies. I've got both of you. Just wraps them in there's, his muscular log there's breaking room arms. enough for both. True, Captain America, leaving room for both of his homies as he kisses them goodnight. <laughs> what's the what's the other what's the other micro thing? Um, it was just a a, a personal thing. Um, a a speaker and um podcaster. Well, not just podcast. She's a public speaker and she did a lot of um a lot of interesting conversations regarding like relationships her name was uh, aisha k fines she uh passed away a couple days ago and it made me oh, very sad because she was yeah she was very very smart very very uh you know well-versed woman uh put me on to a lot of just understanding of how women view relationships and and stuff like that uh, i always thought she was really cool really smart um family didn't I actually think today they had her um her what she passed uh, on the second so what, what was it what was her name uh, aisha k fines f-a-i-n-e-s okay put that down beautiful super duper like wise um every time like she she's on this uh black millennial podcast called the great Vine, but like every time she spoke just everybody shut up and would like listen is <laughs> just always like always had something like profound to say so i always had an immense okay. amount of uh, respect for her and how she navigated her conversations and she was very outspoken uh woman yeah she's she seemed cool um but yeah it's a it's a it's a shame because she's young too she's only like a couple years older than us i'd say like at the oldest 30 31 no oh, really yeah she's jesus yeah that's very young, young. So that made me a little sad, but uh, that being said, um, is there anything else before we get out of here? I think uh, I think that's a good idea, Will. Yeah. Um, Luke, where can people find you at, man? Okay. Um, you can find me right now on Twitter at Luke Alfonso VA. I think that's what it is now. Can't be okay. sure. If you if you I'll, search in those keywords, I'm I'm positive I'll show up. I'm I'll, I'll make sure to uh, add it in the bio. <laughs> and if you're looking for me, find me on Instagram and YouTube <clears throat> at Will the Greatest. Uh, make sure you like the show, follow the show, sub to wherever um, you're listening to this. Send us questions. We also have an Instagram uh, at Atlas Comics Elite. I will try to update it more frequently. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has its own little little following, but you can send in questions there. You can send them to my DMs directly if you ever have questions. Uh, A T L E S Comics Elite. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll see you next time.